At a little under 4,000 feet on Brea Reich, Britain's third highest mountain, the River Dee starts its 85-mile journey to the North Sea at Aberdeen. On the great plateau of the Cairngorms National Park, the waters of the Dee trickle from beneath a mossy embankment known as the Wells of Dee. From there, it gathers its moisture into youthful water until its deluge washes over the rocks of a sudden cliff edge before falling 500 feet into an immense quarry. Gathering pace, the river continues its journey in turbulent steps, converging with the Geldy Burn before rushing water is pushed through a tight gash in the irregularly layered rock of the Lynn of Dee. Only a few miles from its source, the river gathers speed and momentum, eastward bound for the city. Like any other river, its journey is unique. For centuries, artists and writers have been inspired by the greatness, the bleakness and the sheer beauty of the journey. For centuries, artists have tried to capture the ever-changing light. Musicians have tried to interpret the sound and the intent of the meandering water. And writers have tried to capture the journey in descriptive prose. From source to sea, inspiration abounds. Colors scalp a steen and storm, Bray Reich sides are tempest torn, and in on weety darksome wame, for wind is ice and sun's a flame, the Berlin Dee is born. A snow brig hops her growing tide, till bringing up with kettle pride, she's heelst her gory o'er a crag, a fraxen drop, this water hog copes doon a quarry's bride. My first recollection of the river was swimming near Ardo with my father and brother, and also swimming in the River Dee at uh, Braemar with a school party. Slightly later, with the Boy Scouts mostly, we were up exploring the source of the river, which, as most people know, are the wells of Dee and the uh, pools of Dee up in Larig Gru. This is a wonderful area. One of the things that stick in my mind is uh, an episode when we stopped at the March Burn in Larigru with the Boy Scouts and had a famous meal of ice cool water, cheese and mealy jimmies. One of the beauties of the river is there are so many hidden corners which you can explore and find for yourself. But one particular corner which has captured the imagination of many is the old bridge at Invercald. I felt that I had to paint it because one particular day I was there uh, with the blue skies and fluffy clouds and a sparkling blue river. And uh, I had great fun with this one, even though it's been painted so much. It, it is still a classic view and it's, it, it really expresses the, the essence of the river. You've got the trees, you've got the stones, the fast-flowing current, and just a hint of a little bit of Loch Nagar behind it in the background. Uh, just a wonderful view, and uh, I enjoyed painting it, and it, 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 I was quite satisfied with the result. During 2005 and six, I've been working on the Donbank series, and it's very much focused on the River Don near where I live, which is in the Woodside Tilly-Drone area in Aberdeen. As you can tell from my accent, I'm originally from New Zealand, and, but I've lived in Aberdeen since 98. So it was after a trip back to New Zealand in 2005 that I decided that my work needed to be much more about being here in, in Scotland, just observing all the changes and the different moods from the weather and the seasons. So I decided to focus on that. As I came in by Giri land and down by Nether Ha, there were fifty thousand healing men, a merchant to her sing and diddy I o sing, fall did o sing, diddy I o I e. 
As did ye come the Heelan's man, and did ye come the why? And did ye see MacDonald's men as a march it out of the sky? Sing and did ye you sing fall the do sing did ye you a ye? For I've came fe the Heelan's man, and I came o'er the why? And I hae seen MacDonald's men as a march it out of the sky. Sing and did ye you sing fall the do sing did ye you a ye? Come awa wee wifey, I hear my brother's call, as we skip to the top in all weathers, with hardly a rest at all. Come awa wee wifey, they're crying to me still, but now they need to take my arm to help me up the hill. With the last come awa wee wifey, it'll I be my home, so take up my casket and scatter my dust when my climbing days are done. An enterprising young Scot from the north, John Crombie set up his first woolen mill, riding on horseback displaying his skill, while looms at Granholm wove the unique cloth. Inspired by shades of forest, wood and glen, tempered by seasonal rich coloured tones, the Crombie looms weaved, and the rich tweed clones won the day with Prince Albert's clothing men. But industry changes and mills move on, and wheels and reels are left standing so still. Slivers of the past remain in the chill of the waters of the silvery dawn. A spark in the mind of a local lad. Cogs in the undergrowth reach out so sad. Down the steep bank where foxgloves dip heavy like salmon rods across the water, past the elegant beach standing with such sisterly assurance, through the little meadow of stitchworts showing their cheeky faces among the bluebells and campion to stand by the willows who love these watery margins like I do just to hear your voice again. And finally the day meets the dawn separated only by a mile of the sands of Aberdeen Beach. In 1916 William Forsyth wrote my silver city by the sea, thy white foot rests on golden sands, a radiant robe encircles thee of woody hills and garden lands. I'll lift my cap and sing thy praise by silent dawn and crystal dee. Oh, bravely gentle all thy days, fair city by the sea. <laughs> 